Hi everybody, and thanks for tuning in. This is Russ with Delaney Drafting and Design, here with a video showing you how to quickly get started with using eDrawings. eDrawings is a free 3D CAD viewer. Basically, you can open up 3D CAD files that were designed in, say, like SolidWorks or many other different types of programs. It's uh, It works really well with SolidWorks because it's made by Dassault Systems, but you can open up a lot of different uh, 3D files with it. You can rotate, zoom, and uh, measure, and do all kinds of fun stuff that you're about to see here. So I'm here at the main page for the eDrawings Viewer. It's eDrawingsViewer.com, but um, sometimes this page changes, or um, you might be, let's say, um, if you just want to start out from scratch, what you would do is you just go to Google and type in eDrawings. It's uh, the letter E followed by the word drawings. That's simple. So when you do that, you see right now at least it pulls up the uh, eDrawingsViewer.com as the first result. So when we go here, you see um, they tell you a little bit about it, but then you, what you want to do is you want to click here on the download button. And they give you options as far as eDrawings Professional, eDrawings Viewer, and eDrawings Publisher. Um, in this uh, example, we're only going to do the eDrawings Viewer. Now down here, it's, it gives you buttons for Win, uh, Windows and Mac. So I'm using a Windows machine, so I'm going to click on Win Users. It gives you another page here before the download begins. Uh, there's other types of options that they make available to you, but I'm just going to go here with the eDrawings Viewer only and click next. So they give you a download check here. I'm downloading a 64-bit uh, viewer. Um, I'm not going to do this with support for shaders, data. I'm just going to do the regular viewer and click download. Now there's a license check. There's some things that you have to agree to. Um, once you're done reading through that, you click I confirm the accuracy of the statement and then accept and continue. Now it's down here in the lower left. I'm using Chrome. That's where the download's going. If you're using a different browser, you might have to, when it's done, go into your downloads folder or where you where you download the files to. But in Chrome, all you got to do when it's done downloading is just click on that file there. So then I'm getting the user account control asking me if I want to allow this app to make changes. So I'm going to click on yes. And then we're going to proceed with the install shield wizard. Okay, so it says welcome to the installation for eDrawings. I'm going to go ahead and click next. They're asking you for a license key, but you don't need to have one to use the free version here. So again, I'm just going to click on next. Ready to install the program. Great, so I'm going to click install. And of course, it's installing right now. When it's done installing, you should have a little shortcut on your desktop for eDrawings. It says installation completed, and it gives you the option to check for updates every 30 days if you want, and then to launch eDrawings. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. We're going to let the program go ahead and start up here. And I'm going to bring it into the window. And very good. So uh, when you first start the program, you have the option of file. You can open, and there's tools and help. Now, if you wanted to open up a file, you can also just like in Windows Explorer, browse to the file, uh, double click on the file, or drag and drop it into the program. Or, of course, you can hit the uh, open button. And I'm going to select this 3D model here. This is uh, ePART file, E P R T. Okay, so now that's loaded up. Right now, I want to show you the, uh, the buttons at the top here. There's uh, select is the default, and that just lets you select the different faces and that type of stuff. So then here you have the next one is pan. When you click on that, it gives you a different kind of arrow. And when you click, uh, left click that is, and drag, you can drag it to the left, to the right, up and down. And that just pans the view there for you for the, of the 3D model. Now this next one is rotate. So when you click on that and you left click, when you drag down, you're rotating this way. And when you drag up, you're rotating the other way. And then when you drag to the right, you're rotating the model that way. And then when you drag to the left, you rotate it the other way. So you're just using that to rotate the model around. Now, if you have select on, you can also rotate the model by um, the middle 
mouse button if you click and hold that then you can do the same thing where you drag it around and rotate there so you can also zoom using the mouse wheel I'm gonna go ahead and roll it up and you see it zooms out and when I roll it down then it zooms back in and also when you're zooming you influence where it goes by where you're hovering the cursor meaning if I'm up here towards the top and I zoom away I, and it, let's say I want to zoom back in and then I'm down here at the the bottom corner so that influences you can see you zoom into that area right there now if I want to bring it down then I go back further down while I'm zooming and then let's say I want to focus in on this area here so then when you're zooming when you're scrolling the mouse then you just hover the the cursor in that area and that's where it's going to go okay so the next button up here is that it's a zoom and that allows you to uh, with the left mouse button click up when you drag up it's zooming in and when you drag down it's zooming out you can also here uh, zoom to an area so when you click on that then when you left click and drag you're going to draw a box and when you release that's where it's going to zoom to the next button is zoom to fit <clears throat> if you click on that one it's just going to fit it in the middle of the screen for you there now here it has view settings when you click on there's this arrow here it drops down and you got uh, perspective and then also this is ambient occlusion now this is just a uh, visual stuff but um, it's kind of neat I'm gonna go ahead and you see the toggle so if I click it again it un clicks the uh, perspective and goes back to normal view and then same thing with the ambient occlusion the next one here is the view orientation when you click on that it, you have a drop down and then it gives you all the different views like here's the top view this is the left front right bottom view and then over here they give you an isometric view the last button on top here you see they call it display style so when you drop that down this is the default shaded with edges then you have shaded you see how the edges are now smoothed and then hidden lines removed that's what that looks like and then here's with hidden lines visible they're the dotted lines and then the last one they have is a wireframe so you see how that display state is I'm gonna go back to shaded with edges now that's pretty much all the buttons at the top here and what you can do with those now let's look down in the lower left there's reset animate measure section and stamps so if you let's say you have the model like you're, you're rotating it around and maybe even like you pan it off of the screen and you just want to get it back to where it's normal again just click on the reset button and that pulls the model back to where it's uh, nice in the middle and center and a nice isometric view there for you so if the designer had put an animation in the 3d model it would be here under animations when you click on that it flies out here and then say like um, this would be it uh, motion study one so when you click on that you can hit play and then it'll start animating for you now again this has to be uh, set up that way by the guy that uh, drew this in SolidWorks if you will but when you do that it gives you options here for just normal play loop and ping pong if you want it to keep playing the the, um, the animation over and over or if you want it to go back and forth and then lastly you have this where you can change the speed of your animation so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that so it toggles off and then this is probably one that you're going to be using most this is measure it looks like a little tape measure and when you click on that the measure a, a little uh, box flies out here <clears throat> so when you're when you're hovering on the model like here if I hover on that surface you see it goes to red and if you click on that then it goes to green so like say if I wanted to uh, measure the thickness of that part then I would rotate it and then come over to this surface click on that <clears throat> And then it says that uh, right here the two selected items are parallel and normal distance is 0.1 inch so that's what that measures now I click into an open area here and then it unselects that and then we can start measuring again um, we were measuring a face but like let's say that you wanted to measure <clears throat> a uh, an edge so if you measure from this edge here 
uh, let's say to um, this edge over here. You can see that it gives you the dimension right here, 0.485 inches. And also down here in the results, it says the two selected items are parallel. It gives you the distance and um, also it tells you the distance in the X, Y, and Z axis if it's different. So that's kind of nice right there. Now another thing that you can do is you can measure points. If you just highlight, uh, let's say you hover on like a, like a, vert a vertex right here, you can click on that. And then when you click on another one, then it's going to measure the distance in between those two points. Now right here you can see the distance. It says it's at 0.324 inches. And then again, down here in the results, you have distance 0.324. And um, there's no change in the um, other axis. So that's basically how you do uh, measurements. Um, if you could do a radius, uh, diameter, other types of things based on where you're clicking that tape measure tool. And um, I think that's, that's really helpful when you're actually truly reviewing the model. Right here, you also can change the units. You see the default is inches. You can change it to millimeters or whatever else that you want right there. So that's basically the uh, measure tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on that so it toggles off. And then I'm going to show you the section tool. When you click on section, what it does is it gives you a plane right here. And if you left click on that plane and you drag it, you can see that it moves within the model for you to view it at a different depth. Okay, so this is right now on the Y, X axis, but you can change it to the Y, Z axis like this. Down here in the left I did the Y, Z plane. And then again, when you click on the plane and drag it, you can section it at a different depth. And then here is the Z, X or X, Z plane, if you will. <clears throat> so there is the plane you can see it's coming from the top and if i click it and drag it down then again same type of thing where you section it at a different uh, depth now when you're sectioning it like that you have this option here where it says hide plane and that gets rid of the plane for you so you can just view the model itself if you click it back then you see there's also this option here that, that these toggle again so um this is show cap so when you click on that it doesn't show the cap anymore. You see how it's uh, like hollow inside right there. And then the edge is now highlighted in red. So if I go ahead and click on that, then it's going to show it again. So that is the um, section. Let's see. Um, there's also this uh, view normal to plane. If you click on that, then you're looking straight directly at the plane there. And then if you click on flip, let's see here, if we go like this. If we click on flip, then you see you're looking at the opposite section there. So then we're going to go ahead and click that back. Now you see they do have, um, let's see, I'm going to go back to this section here. And then they have face plane. So if you select a face like that first, and then you select face plane, that's where the, the plane is going to be sectioned on. So then again, you can drag and move that. Let's say that I wanted to section the model based on this surface right here. So I would select that surface and then hit base plane. And you see that's where the plane is that it uses to section it. And then again, you can keep dragging and moving it from there. So that's pretty much it right there. Now if I click on section again, that's going to go away. That'll toggle away. And then you have, lastly, this is stamps. This is simply just for um, like the approval process. And you see they have all these bunch of you know standard um, little statements here. Like if you wanted to approve it, you can just click on that and drag it onto the model. And you see it stamps it um, approved. So that's pretty much that right there. Let me move me over here. There we go. And then you can see that it gives you options for mass and this tells you a lot of different details about it like the density and weight and stuff this would have to be oh and also the surface area which is nice so that's pretty much it for the mass now let's move over to the uh, markup now you see that you can you have a lot of different options here for marking it up if you wanted like here is a uh, label say you can click on that and then put a note in there And then that way when you're collaborating with the 3D modeler, they know 
what your comments are in specific areas, which is nice. Uh, lastly, you have annotations. Now, this is something that you uh, might review, like if the uh, designer had put annotations into the model. And that's the same thing here for configurations. This doesn't have any configurations in there, but sometimes a designer might have different configurations for different sizes, different hole patterns, and stuff like that. So here, under configurations, is where you can pull up those configurations that he set up for you. Now, that's pretty much it in the program. There's a little bit more to it, but um, I just wanted to go over the basics as far as uh, reviewing, opening it up, and measuring, and all that. I just wanted to get you started on that with the basics on the program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a link down in the description for the e-drawings, and um, hopefully that helps you guys out with um, starting to use this program. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe.